Hey everybody, welcome to this installment of the Evion blog. Today we're going to be taking a look at an insulation resistance tester and the basic functions thereof and how to use it. Um, basically what we're going to do is see if it's useful in electronics or electronics and electrical or just in the electrical fields. Um, what it's useful for, uh, just some of the few things you can do with an insulation resistance tester. Now the one that I have is a Toptronic model uh, supported by Helaman Heights in here in South Africa. Um, it does have a lifetime warranty I believe, but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get onto the meter and uh, have a look at it and see what it's all about. Hey YouTube. So here we have the Toptronic T1832 Analog Insulation Continuity Tester uh, from Helaman Titan here in South Africa. Um, this specific meter is my current meter that I use for when I'm doing insulation resistance tests on anything. Yes, you get fancier digital ones, but this one's still working and it's got a lifetime warranty, so I couldn't be bothered really buying anything else. So, the meter pretty much does what it says. It's an analog insulation and res insulation resistance tester and continuity tester. Let's just start with the battery test. If you hit the test button with the battery test, goes over to the green area at the bottom over here on the scale, which means battery good. We're happy with that. Now, there's a few little catch-20s with this. If you wanted to do a resistance test at, say, 500 ohms, or let's just say the 3 ohm scale, you would first need to calibrate it. So you would clip your, clip your clips together, push the button, and then you could actually calibrate this to a zero reading on the display. And once you've done that, <coughs> it's now ready for resistance testing. So you could basically clip that on, push the button and it will measure up to 3 ohms or up to 500 ohms over here. But where this thing really comes into its own is the insulation resistance tests. This specific meter will do 250 volts, 500 volts or 1000 volts. Okay. Um, the readings obviously change accordingly. For example, if you're reading, if you're on the 250 volts, you'll see it says 100 mega ohms. So basically at 250 volts, you're halving whatever the displayed resistance is. So <clears throat> for example, if you read a 2 mega ohms, when you push the test button, you halve it, so it's actually 1 mega ohms. If you set it on the 500 volt scale, it's exactly as it is. So whatever it reads, that's currently what it is. And if you go to the 1000 volt scale, you multiply it by 2. So if you read 1, it's now 2. And so on and so forth. Okay, so what I've done now is I've got the output from this unit plugged into my multimeter. I know these units output DC, or this specific unit outputs a DC voltage at 250 volts. So I've got my meter set on DC and I'm going to push the test button. And we're going to see 256 volts appearing on the meter. And we can see we're reading around 20. Because we're on the 256 volt, we've got to half that. So this has got a 10 mega ohm input impedance. So that's pretty interesting to note. Now if we go to 500 volts, now remember 500 volts is 1 to 1. Hit the test button, see we have 500 volts and we got a reading of 10 mega ohms. So that math is definitely right. Now <coughs> the 1000 volts, it might, well it should handle it. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a bit above or below and um, I'm not sure if we should do it or not because we might just blow something up but uh, the point being is if this is 500 volts and we got 511 and we got 250 256 well oh, 1017 volts <laughs> and nothing blew up so 1017 volts and we're halving it, so it's showing 5, so it's 2.5. So the insulation resistance internally over here does break down <coughs> a little bit. Oh, sorry, we're multi multiplying it by 2, so 5, so it's 10 mega ohms. It's still good. It hasn't actually changed at all at 1,017 volts. Quite interesting to note that the uh, MT, uh, TBM829, the uh, major tech. Uh, sorry, not major tech. The Bryman TBM829 actually handles at 1000 volts at 1017 volts. No problems at all. Very well done. So, yeah, that just gives you an idea of what the output looks like 
on these devices. Uh, it is substantially high uh, voltage but very low current. In fact this specific meter is said to put out one milliamp. So besides the fact that it's going to kick you, it won't kill you. So if you feel like um, mucking about a little bit you can hold on to these wires and push the test button or get your mates to do it. Technically if you've got no heart problems or anything it won't kill you, it's just going to bite you. So it'll, it'll let you know that it's there, let's put it that way. <clears throat> so where does insulation resistance come in? Let's say for example you have an intermittent tripping issue and the machine under test is fine. Um, you've actually tested it out by disconnecting and maybe connecting it to another circuit or something and you're still getting trips etc through a certain feed or if you want to test an installation to see if the cables have got any issues or any breaks or any leaks or anything like that then that's where this comes into its own. So what you would technically do is you would connect this to your live and neutral sets hit your test button get a resistance reading then you would go live earth test button neutral earth test button so basically all combinations of wiring just to basically check that you've got enough installation resistance um, between your your voltages um, and this applies to phases as well when you've got multiple phases and this has to be done on a dead circuit so you must make sure that the power is off on the circuit before you go and do this otherwise you could be damaging some things this meter does give you a warning live circuit do not operate if lit so if you happen to connect up it's going to give you a voltage reading and it's going to warn you not to push the test button if you push the test button and it's live you are going to damage the meter just keep that in mind um, this is a common failure point with these sort of things so yeah that's there's not much else to be said for insulation resistance testing i'm going to show you how useful it is for testing appliances next let's just show you a quick test um, in case if you want to test between the primary and the secondary of a transformer or different windings in a coil and a motor whatever basically you would connect between the two circuits now you want to basically check that there's enough insulation between the two you set up your voltage hit the button and as you can see we've got inf almost infinity um, so it's probably in the region of around 200 uh, half that 100 150 mega ohms roughly give or take um, between primary and secondary it's probably a bit more than that because the needle hardly moves um, but that just gives you an idea of how you can test Another place where insulation resistance testers are handy is for testing appliances. You could, for example, attach one of these leads to the body of, let's say, a kettle or a metal appliance, and this to each electrical contact in turn, and run a resistance test and check if there's any problems with the insulation. You could, of course, also connect it up to your appliance under test, hit the button and check if there's any problems. As you can see, right up to 1000 volts, no issues whatsoever. Bearing in mind, if you connect it to the wrong type of appliance, you may damage the appliance, so just keep that in mind. And then you could do the test across to the earth connection. Again, and then live to this point. Test again, and you can see everything's good and happy days. Another place where earth resistance testers or insulation resistance testers are used quite a lot is in motor testing, compressor motor testing, etc. In, in the HVAC or air conditioning fields. Because you can actually use the insulation resistance tester where a normal multimeter, because of the low voltage applied, doesn't pick up a short circuit to the body of the compressor, for example. But as soon as you apply power to it, like 250 volts or 500 volts, then it manifests itself. So for those sort of things, these devices are really handy. Um, they help you with fault diagnosis, etc. I use it purely for a security perspective. But those of you that know me know also that I, as well as doing electronics bench repairs, etc., I also get involved with mixed domain work such as electronics and electrical, um, PLC control drive systems etc. So therefore I'm also qualified to work on the electrical level of things. Um, so I do a bit of mixed electronics electrical work. Um, my speciality of course was of course radio because that's what I did my apprenticeship in and is RF communications engineering. Um, but I do enjoy um, mixing it up and playing with different things and stuff like that so I thought well seeing as I have the electrical and the electronics qualification why not make it official and do a bit of electrical work as well. 
So yeah, I do use this from time to time to test an installation when there's a problem. Um, sometimes when an electrician calls me out, they can't seem to find the issue, blah, blah, blah. Then I would use some of this equipment basically to help me diagnose the problems. Um, and yeah, it's a really great piece of kit to have. Do you need one for an electronics workshop? Probably not. Um, the likelihood of you using it is probably very slim. I mean, I only use this thing possibly three or four times a year at most. Um, and normally when I'm working on bigger equipment. Um, but generally they are nice pieces of kit to have. If you are an electrician and you are a qualified electrician, Wyman, here in South Africa, um, being able to do compliancy tests entails that you have some of this kit uh, and earth resistance testers and all different other compliance equipment but this is one of the requirements um, for being able to do your testing properly to make sure that everything's up to code. So yeah, thanks for watching this very, oh, by the way, before I forget, there is a whole description in the lid on how to use the thing. So even if you're in the field and you forget what to do and you don't have the instruction manual at hand, all the information is there. I'm just going to show you guys one last little thing, which is basically the AC voltage warning that it gives you when the... Uh, system is live just so that you can understand what I'm talking about when not to press the button. I'm not sure if these are going to get in deep enough. Probably not. That doesn't look like it will. We would need to go to a live contact situation in order to get a better reading on things over there because this is quite recessed so I couldn't get these crock clips in there. Why I went the Croclips route and not the multimeter lead route because quite honestly insulation resistance tester you're very seldom going to be probing around to get your signals and generally you're clipping onto leads and then pushing your signal in and uh, taking it from there as to what the problem is with whatever it is you're testing. So I went with Croclips. But you can go whichever way you like. Hey guys. So that concludes our review of the Toptronic T1832 insulation resistance tester. It's quite a nice piece of kit to have, especially if you're in the electrical field. And um, as far as mega ohm impedance testers go, you don't really need to have digital. Analog does work quite fine. In fact, a lot of electricians prefer them because of the simplicity. In so saying, one of my future purchases is definitely an insulation resistance tester in a multimeter format, such as one of the devices from Fluke or maybe even one of the devices from Bryman. We'll see um, which one I manage to afford and which one I can get in the future, and then we'll do a review of that. So again, thanks for watching this episode um, of the Evian uh, Electronics blog, and until next time, everybody, take care.